When you hear the term caching, you probably think of application frameworks like Redis that increase the performance of your APIs. But AWS does offer quite a few other caching solutions that are useful in a whole bunch of different contexts. So the purpose of this video is to give you a brief introduction to some of those different caching solutions and describe to you when they're useful and when you should use them in certain circumstances. So let's just jump right into it and we're going to talk about four different categories of caching in this video. So the first one is Amazon CloudFront, and CloudFront is a content delivery network similar to what you would see in other competitor products like Cloudflare. And CloudFront is generally used to accelerate the delivery of your static assets that you host on your AWS CloudFront distribution. And the most common pattern to use CloudFront is in conjunction with Amazon S3. Now S3 allows you to host many different types of files, including JavaScript, CSS, HTML, or images that are all going to be used on your application website. So the typical pattern is to create an Amazon S3 bucket, upload all of your static assets into it, and then create an Amazon CloudFront distribution that is linked with your Amazon S3 bucket. Now CloudFront will go ahead and deploy your resources to edge locations that are located all around the world. Now when a user tries to access those resources from your website, the content is going to be retrieved from an edge location in order to ensure a better level of performance. In the next category, we have EC2, which allows us to establish a local cache for our application. Now, local caches can also be referred to as in-memory caches. And there's a bunch of different frameworks that exist that allow you to leverage in-memory or local caches depending on the language that you're using. So for example, if you're using a language like Java, then you'd probably use something like Guava, which is a Google framework that allows you to store data on the EC2 machine's memory so that it can facilitate faster data retrievals. Now, it's important to remember that if you're using a local or in-memory cache, if your EC2 machine happens to be replaced, restarted, or terminated for any circumstance, all the data that exists in your cache will then be removed. So this can cause some downstream effects if this unfortunately does happen to you, in which case it's better to look at a more persistent cache that is not local, but is distributed. And that's the next category up for discussion. So in that next category is the Amazon Elastic Cache Service, and this is considered a distributed or a dedicated cache. So it exists outside of the context of your compute infrastructure. And it offers support for two different common caching frameworks that you're probably already familiar with. So the two caching frameworks are Redis and Memcache. Now you may ask yourself, when does it make sense to use one or the other? Well, first off, Redis is by far one of the most common frameworks. So a lot of community support exists both on Stack Overflow and elsewhere in order for you to get answers to your questions. But in terms of the features that they both offer, Redis is very, very flexible with a bunch of different rich feature sets that Memcache does not have. So for example, with Redis, you get advanced data structures like list sets, sorted sets, hashes, and more. Whereas if you're using memcache, you only get access to simple key value pairs. However, both are extremely fast. Both have client libraries for many different languages and both support data partitioning. However, memcache is multi-core where Redis is not. So you may expect to get slightly better performance from memcache. However, I would say that if you're thinking about using the caching solution, Redis is probably the best bet simply because of the versatility and the many different features that it supports. You can check out the AWS documentation for a great comparison between the two if you're deciding between these for an upcoming project. Now, the next category is one that you may not expect, which is Amazon DynamoDB. Now, DynamoDB is a powerful NoSQL database that's used in many different applications that require low latency, consistent performance, and horizontal scaling properties. Now, most of you may think DynamoDB is just a simple key value store, but it's not just a durable store. It does offer caching on top of that using a feature called DynamoDB Accelerator. And DynamoDB Accelerator is a simple attachment that you can add to your DynamoDB table that allows you to achieve read through and write through caching on data that is stored in your Amazon DynamoDB table. And it's very simple to set up and start using if you're already using a DynamoDB client. So typically when you're using DynamoDB with get or write requests, you can expect millisecond level latencies. However, if you're using DynamoDB Accelerator, you can expect microsecond level latencies. So you definitely get a lot better performance. And this is especially useful for data that is extremely read heavy. So these are four different common ways to cache data using AWS services. I hope this video was helpful. And if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.